What hope an Eden prophesied Where tame lived with the wild The lamb and lion side by side Led by a little child a shoot will sprout from Jesse's stem, a branch from David's line, a prince of peace in Bethlehem, the fruit of God's design. As banner of God's love unfold, Christ came to suffer loss, that by his death a dying world would rally to the cross. Come, Jesus, come, Messiah, Lord, lost paradise, restore. Lead past the angel's flaming sword, come open heaven's The Continuing Passion of Our Lord. Now Peter was sitting outside, down in the courtyard. While he was sitting in the light of the fire, one of the maids of the high priest, the doorkeeper, came to him and asked, You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? You were with the man from Nazareth, this Jesus, the Galilean, she said, looking straight at him. He too was with him. But Peter denied it in front of all of them. I don't know him, woman, and I don't know what you are talking about. He went out to the entrance. Then a rooster crowed. A little later, another maid saw him. He was with Jesus from Nazareth, she also told those who were standing around. Again, Peter denied and swore, I am not. I don't know the man. About an hour later, another insisted. It's obvious that this man was also with him. Why, he's a Galilean. After a little while, those who stood near approached Peter and said, It's obvious you're also one of them. Why, your accent gives you away. You're a Galilean. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Then he began to curse and swear. I don't know this man whom you're talking about. Just then, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed a second time. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the Lord telling him, Before the rooster crows twice today, you will deny me three times. So he went outside and he broke down and wept bitterly. As soon as it was morning, all the ruling priests and the elders of the people and the scribes, that is the whole Jewish council, had a meeting. They brought Jesus before their council and asked, Are you the Christ? Tell us. He said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be sitting at the right hand of the power of God. Are you then the Son of God? All of them asked. He answered them, As you say, I am he. Why do we need any more testimony, they asked. We ourselves have heard him say it. Then the entire assembly decided to put Jesus to death. They stood up, 
bound Jesus, took him from Caiaphas to the palace, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. It was early in the morning. When Judas, who betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he felt sorry and brought the thirty pieces of silver back to the ruling priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying an innocent blood. They said, what do we care? That's your problem. Then Judas threw the money into the temple and went away and hanged himself. Falling headfirst, he burst in the middle, and all of his intestines poured out. Then the ruling priest took the money. They, they, when the ruling priest took the money, they said, "It is not right to put it into the temple treasury, since it is blood money." So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. That is why that field has ever since been called the field of blood. Then what the prophet Jeremiah said was fulfilled. They took the 30 shekels of silver, the price of him on whom the children of Israel had set a value, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. So far the passion of our Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. be gracious to us, Lord. be gracious to us, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Help us, good Lord. In all time of tribulation, it, it, we poor sinners implore you to, hear us, o Lord. to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, and to send faithful labors into your harvest and to accompany your word with true grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all who are in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with children and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, to forgive our enemies, 
persecutors and slanderers and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord recorded for us from the prophet Isaiah, the 11th chapter. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I have to tell you that this passage is certainly a very important and favorite one of mine, and so I had to include it in this series of, isn't it divine? The fact that Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches, talks about an intimate connection, and we are intimately connected. I mean, when we take a look at the passion of our Savior, as we get closer and closer to it, it should really touch us to a point of, Sorrow, because it's my sins that did that and because of my intimate connection with him. But you need to understand that that passage from John 15, that theme verse that we're using, comes from this passage of Isaiah chapter 11. That a shoot will come from the stump. And really it's meant to be a vine and an intimate connection and from its branches. So this is something. And as a kid, I'll never forget hearing it. It is Advent time, of course, that we would normally hear this. But honestly, truly honestly, it's supposed to point you, even during the time of Advent, to this time, right here, right now, that there will be a shoot, a little bit of life that comes from something that is big and bulky and ugly and dead. It is a prophecy of a Messiah, that vine, that is true. And so certainly the fact that it's a prophecy and we put it in Advent of his birth, you're to see that shoot, that little bit of life. But what you're supposed to see is the resurrection. That's what you're supposed to see. You're supposed to see the shoot being the resurrection. You're supposed to be able to see life coming out of death. And let's be honest, it's easy to get down and depressed and discouraged. We are surrounded by sickness and pain and suffering and death. And even if it wasn't for this virus, I am saying the exact same thing. 
If this virus personalizes this message to you, great. Because you're supposed to be able, amongst all the sin and all the sickness and all the pain and all the suffering, see the resurrection, the life. And at this point in our Lenten study, you're to see some life. You're to see that, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope. There's no need for fear or worry or concern. What there is, is an almighty God that through the prophet Isaiah in the 600s B.C. was giving hope to a people that was really fearful. So if you back up, and I'll give you some homework for those of you who are following along at home, open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 10. For those of you who are here with us, you've got homework. Go home, open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 10. And you will see a list of names you cannot pronounce. And these are towns that the Assyrians were conquering. You could see the progression of the plague of death that was spreading from Jerusalem as it was heading north. That's the map. And it's just, Isaiah is describing all the bad things that the Assyrians were doing. Boom. Boom. Boom, in this town, boom, and in that town, boom, and in this town, boom. And then, chapter 11, verse 1. And it's beautiful words that give them hope. Now, after all that death, all that destruction, it seemed like the Assyrians were there. There shall come forth a shoot, a little sprout, a little bit of life from the stump of Jesse. I wanted to tell the pun that when I was a kid hearing this, how stupid I was in hearing these words. So the very first time my pastor said that a shoot will come forth from the stump, do you know I went home and I stayed away from stumps? You know what I was thinking? That somebody was going to shoot me. That's what I thought. So and I saw it. And believe me, my, when my grandfather wanted to chop down a bunch of stand of trees so he could farm some more of that land, no, Grandpa! He had no idea what I was, why it mattered to me, and he didn't care. He had work to do. It's amazing how you could take a word and turn it around. But just a little bit of life. The Messiah. And it's done in a Trinitarian form. So much so, it's so special and so important that we take these very words and we place the pastor's hand on the head of the catechumen and we say, the spirit of wisdom and strength. Okay? And we continue with the blessing of how the spirit of God that comes from that shoot, from the Messiah, that was delivered from Yahweh, God himself, to us is now extended to you and to me. It comes through our baptisms. It comes through that faith. And you guys, wood in Scripture means salvation. And there's not a better place to see that than right here, where there's death and destruction all around. You see a little bit of life. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? I, you know, there's... I. I choose some, and I, you know, there's sometimes you see just a little sprig, which I like as well, but I like this one, because if you see death along, you can, are drawn to that, that green, that life. You can really see it from a ways off, and you want to go check out what is that life. People need to see and check out he who is our life. Our sins put him to the wood of the cross, and because that stump happened because of sin and suffering and death, through the death and the, what seems like everything's lost for us, there is life that springs forth. That shoot. A shoot will come forth from the stump of Jesse, and it is the most divine thing you could ever have. It's easy to be distracted because you see all the big stuff of the death all around you, 
all the suffering and the pain and the fear. But we focus and are drawn to the life, to that shoot that comes from the stump. And it is the most divine gift that you could ever have. To God be that glory and you that promise and blessing. Amen and amen. time for you uh, and on purpose I want to explain what's happening as a people of God um, we always want to go with fourth commandment and what our authorities say governor Pete Ricketts issued uh, a mandate and, and specifically mentions church services that there are to be 10 people uh, in, a, in an area and that area is defined by ventilation systems and we here at Hope have four ventila separate ventilation systems. I think technically we have five, but we are using four. And that would be here in the sanctuary, there in the gym, and there's two of them over in the education building. The people of Hope thought it was very important that we still continue things as normally as we can, but we need to obey the law. And the law says until the 31st of March, that number 10 and six feet apart is what matters. And so we are going to enforce that because theologically speaking, I can't go against that. There are other things theologically that the government tells me that I must do that I can't and I won't, but this is not one of them. And so the elders and I and, and any of you with your thoughts and say will matter, but we have to obey the law. And that's very, very important that we do that. We're not trying to, to do anything other than that. Things keep changing. Day by day, they keep changing. And please know, I have always been following and keep following um, the CDC website, as well as the Department of Health and Human Services for the state of Nebraska, of which we are a part of. So I follow all of that, and I try to stay current with that. I don't know whatsoever what Facebook is telling you, Twitter or any other social media. I don't know what media is telling you, but I do know what the official guidelines are on the website. We have always been following those and we're continuing to do that. And as things change, we will try to communicate that with all of you as best as we can. One of the best places is to go on the website. But if you don't have contact on the website or you just want a phone call or an email, let us know that and we'll gladly do our best to keep communication lines open as much as possible. I will gladly visit anybody at home if they need a visit from me. Um, that is always there. And we do want to pray for each other and for our country and for the world. And hopefully through all of this, it brings us together and brings us to the foot of the cross of our Savior. So I just want to announce that to you. That's why it's a little wonky, um, but that's the reason for it. And it's important that we follow those guidelines. 
So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, by all means, share them with me. I have received some emails and some texts from people and some one-on-one -on -one conversations, and I will gladly continue to receive them to see what I can do to help address and answer any questions or concerns. So, all right? God's blessings to you. Have a nice day. In Jesus Christ, a wonderful forever.